Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Michelle, and uh, this is my colleague, Adam. Uh, we will talk about what we are doing over there in China, the other side of the world, about our financial industry, about the agility uh, transformation over there. Um, here is our uh, self-introduction. Actually, we started our consulting business like nine years ago, and we devoted to uh, financial industry's agility. So uh, now we are uh, the leading position there in Chinese market, and our uh, clients include like the largest insurance company uh, in China, Ping'an Insurance, and CCB China Construction Bank, which is the second largest bank in, uh, in the nation, and also a China Merchant Bank, which is the leading retailing bank. Um, so um, we will talk about our case studies, which means that those are what we have experienced during the last nine years. And some of that in Chinese characters because details cannot be exposed. So I just leave it there as Chinese character. And if you have any uh, questions, and we are open to discuss it after the presentation. Yes. Thank you. Uh, here is about um, what we talk about enterprise agility over there in China. We use the word VUCA, I guess uh, maybe you all know about it a little bit, which means um, uncertainty, ambiguity, complexity, and velocity. And um, over there on the left, on the right, it's uh, the pain, desire, and the barriers people they feel when they want to talk with us about how can they achieve agility. And um, so um, here is, because this is just based on our own experience, so uh, when we talk with our customers, one thing we will emphasize is that uh, FIFA purpose is the word used here, and we will use something like customer satisfaction to uh, increase your speed of delivery for IT department and also to make your business successful for a business section and also to reduce management risk and cost. Uh, so here, um, at the very beginning, when people they come to talk with us, they mainly feel fear. I mean, that is, uh, they don't come to just to uh, have a talk casually with us. The thing is, like, now they feel that their uh, enterprise life cycle has become shorter and shorter. And here I use some figures, like from uh, 60 years to 50 years during the past 50 years. So, um, and in China, it's the same, because now the market is becoming from incremental market to stock market, which means the increase has stopped a little bit. And also, uh, in the past, we used the way of copy to China solution, which means we just borrow what happened here, and then we copy it there, and that works. But now it's become more and more difficult. Another thing is about the technology, so that means some disruptive business model appears, and also knowledge worker is different from those uh, labor workers. And also, um, now we can feel that some old way of management cannot work anymore in the company. Um, so in China, now we have some big consulting companies like McKinsey and BCG and PwC, they're talking about enterprise agility. Actually, they are setting this contact to the uh, executives. So um, they say, like, this is the task of CEO to make the scale enterprise agility, and also now it's the time to, for the elephants, which means banks and insurance companies, to start to dance, actually how to learn to dance. And those uh, papers and websites are issued over there in China. And here are some banking executives talking about being agile. And I use uh, this one is, um, is from, from Ping'an PM Bank, which is the retailing VP over there. And he actually talking about how to enhance agility. And all these three companies, they are our uh, customers, so we are quite familiar with them. So um, they talk about agile organization and they talk about agile bank. <laughs> Uh, so uh, I want to add a little bit uh, what I feel different here is that uh, uh, I, I talked with some of the colleagues here that, you know, why, uh, what's the difference between the banks uh, in China and here in U.S. or in uh, Europe? Uh, we got a feeling that actually the banks in China is very uh, anxious, uh, afraid, uh, 
of the change uh, of the environment. Uh, we feel that the big reason is that the regulation in China, the banking industry is relatively not that strong as like here in US uh, or in Europe. Uh, so uh, uh, all the banks uh, are facing a lot of competition from internet companies. Uh, as you may know that uh, the major payment method in China now is not credit card anymore. It's uh, we call WePay, which is actually uh, a kind of payment function in China. Facebook is 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 WeChat, and it's kind of Facebook-like. Uh, and most people using them to do the daily transaction payment, and not using credit card anymore. So uh, all the banks fear that if they're not, if they are not changing, they will kind of run out of business. Uh, so that's why that we feel that. Uh, you know all the bank executives like chairman and not not uh, the IT people talking about agile anymore. It's really the CEOs, the chairmen. They began to talk about agile banks, uh, agile organizations. Uh, so they want to the whole organization to be agile instead of only the IT piece. So so that's kind of uh, uh, because Michelle and I has attending the Kanban event for like five years now, uh, and also. We, we try to be in US uh, in April and then Europe, uh, France or Spain or Germany in like October uh, to get a feeling, a sense of what's, what's the trend here. Uh, but the bigger change, uh, biggest uh, difference we feel that is that uh, in China, the banking industry, they are very, very nervous now and they really very determined to be agile. Uh, so uh, we kind of feel that maybe this is like what will happen here uh, next, maybe three years, five years, I, I, we guess. Uh, because we, as Michelle showed that uh, in China, we, we kind of noticed that all the big firms, big consulting firms like McKinsey, they are talking about Agile all over now. So that's kind of a little bit background on you know, what's going on in China market. And uh, yes, here uh, we use the word "could" organization, which is about four elements when we explain to uh, those executives what's going on, because they are actually people in their 50s around, and it's a little bit difficult for them to really understand what you are talking about. So we use uh, "could." in Chinese, which means cool organization. So for them, just too easy to remember the words. And that is actually capitals for a knowledge worker and for uncertain circumstances and for complex system, which means the banking actually is a really complex system, and decision making, because we feel that decision making is a really key uh, procedure in those banks, which means that you have to make constant uh, speedy and correct decisions with high quality, and that is the key to uh, to be successful. Uh, let me add a little bit here: is that uh, you know we talk about UCA a lot, uh, but basically uh, we don't talk about, about UCA. And there are certain things you like, like uncertainty, uh, but there are certain things you think you know you, you don't know what you mean by ambiguity in a way. So we kind of try to phrase a new term here. Uh, we think it's better term than VUCA in a way because uh, like David said, we are mainly knowledge workers working together and then uh, you know, uncertainty, does, you know, we like that term a lot and really the complex system in this kind of framework. Uh, and the, other, the last one is the decision making. We find that in the banks, the biggest time spent is actually not the doing things but really the decision process. You know, people talk, a talk, you know, this way, that way. And, and that's, mo that's where we lost all the flow efficiencies. Uh, so that's why we, we kind of add decision here. And like Michelle said, it's like uh, we find it's good because it's good. And in English, that's a good word in a way, right? And in Chinese, it actually means cool. So, so we kind of uh, forge this term. And we, we kind of feel that it's better than wuka. And, we kind of actually using every character here to to mean something instead of you know actually for VUCA we mostly use uncertainty and complexity in, in the term. Yes, 
And, uh, and also when we talk with uh, those executives, which um, uh, who most come from some kind of uh, business management school, and so we use some academic stuff to help them to understand the concept. This one is about dynamic cap uh, capability theory, which they can understand easily. That means um, they can regard organizational capacity as capacity uh, level zero and dynamic capacity as capacity level one because uh, when we talk about agility, we try to make them understand that they try to build the capacity to uh, face the uh, unpredictable changes and under uh, uncertain circumstances and to improve the efficiency in exploring new opportunities. So um, that is more like the agile thinking. And for lean thinking, because in China, we have really strong manufacturing uh, stuff over there, so people they are familiar with lean thinking, and we try to make people understand the difference between lean thinking and agile thinking in some way. Maybe it's not that correct, but just uh, our way of talking with our clients, so then so that they can understand it a little bit easier. And here also, uh, this is a little bit a uh, big picture. I will not uh, talk about too much about that because uh, when we talk with them, we uh, try to explain how physics now uh, uh, describe the world and how philosophy describe the world, like free will, and how agile describe the world, because that is mainly we put that in the management field. Yeah. The, the reason why we come up with this is really that we feel that uh, to be agile, the biggest challenge uh, is not really on the, you know, the middle level or the low level, uh, it's really about changing the mindset for the management team. Uh, so, because they have already their way of thinking, they have been successful for 30 years and they know what's going on. And then you come up with some new terminology and they kind of maybe let you play for a while, something like, okay, go and have a fun. But they, they don't really want to change. Uh, so we are trying to uh, find a way to let them understand that the whole management theory, uh, most of the managers, uh, is ba the, their thought is based upon is really we call them certainty thinking. Uh, it's based on Newton physics. It's based on some you know certainty philosophy. And nowadays, you know, we really should think about like quantum physics and the free will, those kind of stuff. So, so kind of uh, uh, at least put the question mark on the management head. Like, okay, this guy may tell something interesting. Instead of, you know, he, he would kind of very strongly hold his thinking and his ideas. Uh, so that's kind of our way of trying to uh, get into the management because we feel that for the enterprise agility, the most important thing is really to uh, get the higher level, higher, higher level management support and at least, you know, put the question mark on their head and begin to think about, okay, maybe they got something and let them try it, something like that. Uh, so here we also draw a um, map, something like that, to describe uh, what happened with man uh, certain management style and uncertain management style. Um, what we want to speak here is that it's not like being agile is just the absolutely right thing. Sometimes you need to fix it, I mean, like mix it up together for some process, and you can just uh, imagine it in the old style just become more and more efficient. But for some uncertainties, then you need to think of a new way of managing your team, managing your work. So uh, those are, this is a picture when we uh, put it over there and people, they feel that they can understand something from there. So we call it two core management system. Yeah, and also uh, we kind of put it in the AC, like Agile, uh, Creative Ecosystem Management Framework. It's also try to, you know, uh, make them think about, you know, that the, the, the problem is not really lies in the people or even the system, but the way of management thinking. So we try to create some, uh, you know, like a two core or at least uh, open some gate to let them think about there's different way of management. Uh, so a uh, little bit uh, detail on that is that uh, on the objective side, uh, as you know, everybody now is more and more popular on OKRs, at least, you know, you know, from KPI, at least you should think about OKR, you know, that's something you should try or at least learn. And also we talk about the strategy, you know, how, what kind of strategy way of thinking you should 
use and organizational structure, the culture, and how do you to plan, how do you do acting, uh, those kind of stuff. So basically, we, we tell them what you do before. It may still work in some situation, but we are try to tell them that there's other situations you should, new, you should learn new stuff. So kind of uh, create a two core management system for them to understand uh, so that they can you know, at least try to learn with more open heart instead of just you know, kind of uh, doing something and without believing. Okay, so here we divide our um, practice into four categories, uh, which include actually 25 fields. Um, those are practices we, uh, we did in our uh, experience which is about IT delivery and business innovation, organizational governance, and uh, culture. Um, we have done a lot of stuff for uh, IT delivery and business innovation during the last nine years. And uh, last year and this year, we are focusing on uh, organizational governments. And culture is really a big word that take, we feel like five to 10 years for a company to achieve something like agile culture. So we just uh, let it be there. It will be changed slowly. Yeah, for Chinese, you know, we like exams, so a lot. So as, as long as you give them something that can have a mark, and they love that. So it's kind of like an agile assessment framework. So basically, we go in and tell you, OK, you are maturity level one, level two. You know, uh, like KMM, something like that. But basically, people love you know, maturity model in China. So people, they just love to be graded. Uh, so we create something not so, it's multi-dimensional. Uh, so you got like 25 exit, uh, access for different maturity uh, so that you can, you can have three on this and have one on that. Doesn't, doesn't mean anything. Uh, so we try to give them uh, a way of reflecting their maturity, uh, but don't compare with each other because not, this is not only 100 to zero, right? So you have, you have different multiple combinations. So uh, you, you kind of compare with your last year, and you, you know, oh, I'm, going, uh, I'm getting better in this uh, area, and I'm staging on that area. So that kind of ways uh, we are doing kind of assessment uh, for enterprise maturity model. Yeah, and from this, uh, from this slide, we also want to emphasize that uh, when we talk with um, customers, we will just tell them that there is no silver bullet for doing Agile. It's not like something you can learn just really like in five minutes. So uh, you need to take con uh, constant efforts. And the key is to do the iteration and optimization all the time. And you can start as a whole, or you can just uh, start from a really small slice. It's, there is no strict rules. Like there is no wonderful solution for you to choose what you should do. It's just like what, you, what your objective is and, and uh, what is the best way for you. Uh, here is some details, but uh, for like for IT agility, uh, we uh, emphasize these some con concepts. But because the stuff here is a little bit too much, so I will not talk about that in details. We will uh, talk about some example later on. Yeah, I'll just add one thing is that I don't know whether the guys talk about that DevOps here, uh, but basically that's another another agile movement. Uh, they just think about like agile is in a way that has been 20 years here and you know it's not new anymore so they come up with new terms and try to be agile in a way so basically if you if you go to any devops conference you feel that you know is is from the business to the development to the deployment so it's everything so uh, it's also you know the, the, the same package in a way as agile but just try to rebranding everything uh, but we feel that, uh, at least in China, that the IT guys love that because, you know, they kind of be agile or scrum for like 10 years and nothing happens. And so, oh, this time uh, another silver bullet comes, you know, I like DevOps. Uh, but uh, we feel that, you know, but for the business side, DevOps, you know, doesn't fly in a way because they choose the wrong term for a movement, you know. You cannot think about CEO and tell their people, you know, we want to, de we don't, we want to be a DevOps company. So, so that doesn't happen. So, but, but that just uh, to send about DevOps. Okay, and here is about business agility. Uh, what we do is uh, about the innovation 
Actually, that is some concept we borrow from lean startup because that if you do it in a company, you cannot say lean startup. It's better just to say lean innovation so that they can understand. And then we do something like uh, design thinking, like um, business canvas, uh, MVP to uh, just to that their business section to enhance the chance of success. And also uh, we. Uh, we teach something about online operation ability to increase customer satisfaction and lower the cost uh, through the internet. Those are some main practice we do for uh, their business side. Yeah, one thing we find out that you know, although you know, we are still working with IT a lot, but we kind of feel that IT is not the really the pain point of the company. Uh, most of the time, we are building the wrong thing. And or we're building something that no one uses. Uh, so no matter how efficient you are, uh, you're kind of wasting most of the energy anyway. Uh, so uh, in that sense, we feel that, that the agility in other part of the organization, and the product team, uh, the operation team, uh, kind of gives more value uh, as a whole. You know, uh, if we think about optimizing in the whole company. Yes, and uh, we introduced for the governance side, we introduced the Spotify model. Um, because there is safe and there is less, there is other, uh, also uh, like agile scaling uh, framework. But those are from IT sites, that is one thing. Another thing is we think that is a little bit too strict for an enterprise when you say that you need to achieve agility. So we actually, we like this company a lot, Spotify. And then uh, we uh, borrowed them, their model. And this is uh, about their score, trap, chapter, and guild. Um, but the thing is, we don't change the organization into this structure immediately. We actually build up a virtual operational structure according to Spotify model, be above the, their uh, enti entity organizational structure because that is much easier for them to do. And another thing is for banks, you cannot just change the organization so, uh, this, in such an um, easy way. So uh, we use this, uh, the, the structure on the left to do those uh, operational structure. And then we use uh, OKR, which is objective and key results system to, as a supplement to KPI, to current KPI system, so that to enhance the communication inside the company. And we use Kanban during the process for monitoring and for some risk control. And also we use some other uh, practice as um, like Agile PMO, which is project management office system, so that they can do it from different angles. Yeah, I'm just happy to hear about the ING story because we heard a lot about ING story in China. Uh, at least you, you, you guys also use Spotify, uh, so that's good. Uh, but uh, uh, the reason uh, we kind of choose Spotify is that uh, although Agile start from IT, uh, but when we use that in, the, in, in other part of company, we want to choose the least IT flavor uh, framework, uh, the Scrum, uh, the safe was all over IT in a way, so you, you kind of had to customize too much to use them in the uh, non-IT environment. Uh, so we kind of choose Spotify and uh, both us and McKinsey, McKinsey actually do a lot of implementation, uh, some implementation in China as well to do, out, uh, to do the agile transformation and they also use Spotify model. I, I think that's for the reason because that probably the, late, uh, the most lightweighted agile framework uh, that you can use. Uh, so a little bit background on, on that. So, so we're kind of a big fan of Spotify model uh, for now. Okay. Yes. Here is about culture. And one thing we uh, mentioned before is about how to change the mindset of the uh, executive teams. So we introduced like two core management system. And another thing is about um, to build up an internal engine for uh, agility. 
um, because we are people from outside who cannot be there all the time, and we are a little bit expensive, so the company, they would be happy if we just help them to build the internal engine, which means we give them the toolboxes, we uh, help them to, uh, to, have, to get more internal coaches trained, and when, sometimes we even build up something like the agile center inside the company to ensure that when we were away and they can also do it. So, and another thing is we think it's um, because we, we did it on team level, on uh, unit level, department level, and also on enterprise level. And we think the best way is to base on uh, team level to enhance agility, agility because um, that means that you have like 10 people, people's team, and then it's easier for them to, uh, to work together to, to uh, help each other and just, you know, uh, because if it's too big, like we have something like 50 people as our team uh, in the past, but that doesn't work that well because the big is too, it's, it's just too big. People, they are scared to speak out. So we would like to focus on um, the team of like 10 people and then uh, just to use it as the basic unit to enhance their agility capacity. Uh, yeah, we do a lot. Actually, we, uh, nowadays we feel that uh, because a lot of organizations, especially in the banks, that they, they organize in more like the function silos. Uh, so that's kind of how they're organized. Uh, and uh, we use the Spotify model to build the tribes and to build the squad, uh, as Michelle said, as a virtual team, uh, so that actually we, we build a flow that are flow across the, the function trellos. Uh, but we still keep, most of the time, we still keep the organization organization structure same. Uh, we don't change the real power structure, but build a, more like the flow across the silos. Uh, we use virtual teams, uh, but we ask the virtual teams to sit together and to kind of have dinner all the time and try to work together as a team, although they report to different managers. Uh, so that's kind of the practice we use now. And the other thing is that uh, we feel that <laughs> Actually, most of the time, we nowadays start uh, IHR transformation with the reorg now. Uh, because we feel that if we don't break the function silos, and just the, the change happens too slowly. Uh, so nowadays, most of the time, we start from the a tribe level and just to you know, re redesign and uh, re-implement an uh, org structure, uh, like a tribe structure and a chapter structure. And kind of give them new process to like it to start a transformation at a hundred or two hundred people uh, scale uh, so that's kind of becoming a coffin comfort zone uh, but the biggest challenge we find is really that especially in the banks uh, at least in China everybody is trying to do the digital transformation try to be internet companies try to be fight, uh, fintech companies uh, so we find the biggest gap is not it's not actually the management but actually the uh, hard skills like a product management like uh, uh, marketing you know data scientists so basically uh, your lack of you know maybe 10 rows instead of you only have some business people and some IT guys. So basically, you have two rows ready, but you kind of have 10 rows you know, not capable enough. So uh, we end up with run, running a lot of training programs for, for the customers so that to boost the, 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 the capability level for the whole enterprise. Uh, yes, and when we go to um, a company who wants to be agile, and we mentioned that before, we will do the appraisal and then we will see their current situation, and then we think about the objectives of this company, and then we will just draw something like the roadmap, and uh, we can choose from different uh, ways, something like, we call it like double speed, multiple speed, it doesn't matter that much, but the thing is just like, uh, we need to understand what they are doing now, and what they, their objective is, and then so that we can help them to uh, achieve that. So here, we actually, we uh, categorize like three way, uh, all three, three modes of doing Agile. One thing is we call it like experimental transformation. That means for this company, there is no clear goal. There is no focus, actually. It's like a narration style. We say it's like you do a spar in the results. 
means that when I hear I hear that agile is a good thing, and we want to have a try. We have um, plenty of money, and uh, we are really leading position in the market. So we just want to give it a try. And another way of doing it is um, demanding transformation. It means uh, that is problem driven. We have a clear objective what we want to do with this agility transformation, what kind of problems we want to solve. And so we call it like conventional treatment mode. And another thing, I mean, uh, which we think is with the highly, highest risk is overall transformation. And there are a few banks over there that are doing it. And that means they want to become organizational, uh, to achieve organizational agility at once. Uh, we call it shock therapy. Um, they change the en entity of the company, in actually, and not just the headquarters, also their branches, altogether. Uh, it's like the revolution in a really um, shocking way. So, um, but the, the good thing is um, they, they can see the achievement really quickly, but there is also a high risks uh, behind. Yeah, so. Uh, so, uh, just a little bit more detail on this is that uh, the CMB, which is the second largest bank in China, they're kind of state-owned and they have a lot of money, so they kind of just want to some agile decoration on their branding in a way, so they kind of, uh, 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 I, I don't know whether uh, you guys heard about Ghana's dual model here or dual model IT or something like that, basically that you have a agile part of the, your companization and you have either a waterfall part or a slow part of your company. So, so Gartner kind of uh, keep that model. And we see that a lot of the bigger banks in China was adopting that model and try to uh, try a slice of you know, agile in some department which is not mission critical. Uh, so that kind of what we see that one uh, on the one side of the most uh, conservative side of the banks uh, was using that way to uh, adopting agile, but now a days, at least in China, it's kind of politi political correct to be agile. You know, it's, everybody has to take some bite on agile, or you are kind of out of date or going to die. Right? So you have to do something. Uh, and the CMB uh, is another story. They are the kind of biggest retail bank in China. They have, they have been doing retail bank for like 10 years ahead of everybody. So they already built a very uh, deep trench on the retail marketing, re retail banking industry. So they kind of try to, you know, just move uh, very carefully because they are already very successful. So, so that, that kind of two customers we have that they, they're kind of using this more like a casual way of doing agile. And we see the Ping An Bank, which is, uh, Ping An was the biggest insurance company, but they are relatively small banks, but they got a lot of reference that they, they can use to work together between the insurance company and the bank company. So th they are very uh, aggressive, and they try to take over CMB, actually. So they, they try to be the biggest retail bank. So they kind of adopt uh, more like, we, we feel that it's more like a more pragmatic way of adopting Agile. So and they are doing business agile and IT agile at the same time. So they are not, not only doing the IT agile. Uh, so for them, we've, we kind of like them most in a way that we feel that it's more, uh, you, you can change whatever you want to change, uh, but then uh, they don't change other things, don't need to be changed. But the other way, we, we feel that the most uh, you know, brief agile adopters is some of smaller banks, and they kind of, you know, uh, like this idea and try to more like a, like the silver bullet and try to change everything. So they kind of, they kind of this more banks that work uh, change in the, the CEO level or the chairman level. So they change everything in their bank. And they uh, one thing we don't really like is that they kind of also uh, you know put the IT people and the business people together into one tribe, which is we are still observing uh, because. They're a good part of it and, and bad, that part of, uh, on that uh, experiment because they kind of two different people doing two different things and you f put them put them into one squad. You know, there's good things and bad things may happen. So we we're still kind of observing that, uh, but they kind of certainly the biggest, uh, you know, the bravest move on, on, on be agile. So we kind of see different ways and uh, so we 
give you this reference because uh, you know our customer likes that because they kind of want to choose. Okay, uh, there is different people, and I, I want to take which position to adopt Agile because each way they have own reasons to doing that. Yes, so three strategies, three paths, and three speeds. Uh, we, we use that to uh, explain to our customers, and as Adam just said, they can choose as their, uh, as on, on their own. And so here is an example about a traditional bank. Their uh, agility journey is a little bit specific. Uh, I'm not sure whether it's like the bank here, because in, in China, the bank over there is really multiple layers. And you can see on the right side, that means like seven layers from CEO until the product manager. And so the, that's why we say the decision making procedure is really long. And then uh, uh, their, their, their function is strictly divided from each other. And you can see the market department, risk control, and IT delivery, so on and so forth. And so um, one thing is we actually do the appraisal, as we just said, and analyze based on their objectives. Um, this one, they want to increase their credit cards business, and they want to actually acquire 10 million more new customers over last year. And then, um, so we, we focus on that objective, and then we uh, actually dig into problems and analyze uh, the causes behind. On the left side is some problems um, on the appearance, and on the right side is the, uh, the causes related, and also which category can we uh, divide them to. And then um, after that, we uh, actually set up uh, con more concrete goals, and then we do the icebreaking and kick off our experimental system. So I will skip a little bit. And then uh, we are covering their end-to-end -end collaboration process because uh, when we, as we say, uh, for the banking system, their decision-making procedure actually is the time-consuming procedure. And so we actually combing their process from the beginning to the end so that we can understand where the bottlenecks are, where the time-consuming can be, can happen. And after it, we think about how to design their virtual operational structure. On the left side is the original ones, and then we introduce some structure like Google's, like Toyota for them as references. But finally, we came up with this one. This is the virtual operational structure for their business side. Um, here are some scores, and there are some resources they share because uh, they don't have enough people for different roles. So uh, the thing is, sometimes uh, you cannot put that role inside the team. You just need to borrow it when you need it. And then we design our IT delivery department uh, accordingly, just to make those two, they can cooperate better. And then uh, because um, when you do this kind of stuff, people, they cannot get used to it like over one night. So the thing is we actually establish a virtual professional community during the process. So this community, community uh, can help them to do some decision makings and you know, just to make it smooth to move from their really uh, high layers of management to a flat one. And we use some Kanban staff meetings, or uh, review meeting, this kind of stuff, just to ensure their daily work. And also, one thing is to solve specific problems appeared according to their damage influence during this whole procedure. We did it like within half a year. So actually, we solved some really concrete uh, stuffs over there. And also, after a while, we, uh, we figured out the authorization a mechanism because we have got that operational system work for a while and some stuff can be more certain. So we, um, we make this organizational mechanism to enhance this kind of uh, decision making and um, to improve their agility afterward. Uh, so here is some results after six to 12 months, their throughput 
enlarged by 300%, lead time shortened by 60%, and defect decreased by 90%. Those are from IT side. And also for business side, their credit card volume increased by 80%. So that means they are happy with the ending, and then uh, we move it from their credit, credit card uh, department to um, car financial department and to um, other departments inside this bank. Yeah, one thing I uh, one thing I add is that you know we kind of spend a whole year with them, uh, about six years with the IT team, uh, to basically to reorganize like 500 people into eight tribes and to master up all the processes. Uh, uh, and after that, we began to work with the marketing department, which is uh, uh, but this this is more like the credit card subunit uh, of the bank. Uh, so after that, we kind of work with the marketing team, and we finally achieve like we can issue a card, a new card, uh, within eight weeks, uh, everything countered. So basically, it's more like the the development a new card uh, that as a product uh, within eight weeks. Yes. So uh, here is some business outcome. And then uh, we got some insights. It's like the leadership have to to be really supportive uh, during this whole process. Otherwise, it cannot be done so smoothly. And another thing is, agility actually is not the final uh, stop. So you will need to set up the clear business goal and then ensure everyone can understand it. And another thing is, um, we we build up this cross-functional tribal mechanism, and we feel that. That is uh, quite suitable for most of the banks. And so uh, we, now we are trying to introduce it to more and more our customers just to help them to do it in an easier way. And we feel actually um, achieving enterprise agility is not like this stuff. You know, it's like sellers in vendors. You know, it's, that's so easy so quickly, but actually it's about you create a new ecosystem inside the enterprise. That is all. Thank you. Thank you for listening. Uh, we have some time for questions, so please feel free to make any questions to Michelle and Adam, if you like, please. Mm -hmm. okay. Thank you. Thank you. Hi. <laughs> uh, I'd like to ask you guys, I, I saw you have the, the MVP drawing, right? And I'd like to ask you guys, what has your experience been with uh, invalidating hypotheses? Uh, there's uh, several obstacles you have to uh, fight to do the MVP in the banks. Uh, first, uh, psychologically, you know, uh, at least in China, uh, fail is not the thing that you know people, t you know, can say, okay, I have tried. No, 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 no. You have to be hundred percent sure you are doing the right thing. Uh, so uh, we feel that, uh, so you have to kind of brainwash them. That's why we spend a lot of time brainwashing the CEOs and let them understand that you have to set up aside some fund that can fail. Uh, so basically, you kind of ask them for many, saying that, okay, for this smart department, they can fail uh, within $10 million, because all the banks, you know, no, you, you, you probably have banks, but you know, at least when we work with banks, you know, before that we are talking about like K or million, you know, when we work with banks, you know, we are uh, happy to always use like a billion, you know, something like that. So, so they're kind of rich guys. So, but at least you, you have to start from there, you know, uh, make them set aside some money that uh, they are okay to lose. Uh, so that's the that's first thing. And the other thing is that uh, we feel that we fight a lot with the finance department uh, because finance team, they always ask like, you know, how much you earn after you do this? But you kind of tell them it's experiment. Uh, oh, I understand uh, then how much you earn after this experiment. Uh, so we kind of uh, <clears throat> also work with, 
the, the finance team a lot uh, to come up with a new model. You probably cannot succeed saying that, just let me do it. Uh, you, come up, you need to come up with something simpler uh, than what they have before, because uh, before that, it's kind of, it takes them probably months to build a model and to tell the finance people that this will work. And it, people spend all the energy just to build a model and then don't have the real energy to build the real thing because you know, everything was spent on, on the building the model. Uh, so we kind of find some between. Uh, we feel that it's not really hard to let people doing the real work understand experiment is important. It's really the system around that basically kill all the opportunities for you to do the real experiment. Uh, so, so that's why we spend a lot of time brainwash the high levels. Uh, but the good thing is that you know, with your agile power <laughs> is high enough, and then everybody is free to be told that the finance people is not agile. So everybody want to be part of agile, but don't do know, don't know how to be agile. And you kind of tell them, okay, just you know, now you have 20 input for this algorithm. Can you make me five? Uh, but it still work for you, and he kind of worked that out, and that's kind of simplified the process. Uh, we, we cannot say that it's just you know one step to all the freedom, but at least you are better. So something, uh, what do we do for the MVPs? Great, thank you. Thank you.